The creation days in Genesis 1 are not literal 24-hour solar days. This, my friends, is the day-age interpretation. You know, if you have kids, they're going to ask questions about Genesis 1 at some point. And so I think it's really important that you can interact with them on these ideas and sometimes even the ideas that you disagree with. And you can't agree or disagree with this view unless you know these four foundational arguments. So argument number one, 24 hours was not enough time to squeeze everything that happened into day six. So all on day six, God formed man. He placed him in the garden to work it and to keep it. Did he get started on his work? If so, how much did he accomplish? And then God set out to find him a helper. So God brought the beasts and the birds to Adam. Adam named the animals. Come to find out none were suitable for him. God put Adam to sleep, took part of him out of Adam, created woman with him, woke them both up, brought them together. They got married. And all of this happened within 24 hours. Point being, it appears that the author is doing more within the text than merely recounting hour-by-hour, hour, day-by-day, surveillance camera kind of footage. In the attempt to rebut this point, Answers in Genesis, they actually created this chart for the sixth day, and they tried to show how everything actually could have happened within the 24-hour period of time. But again, one wonders, are we starting to emphasize something within the text that the author wasn't aiming to emphasize? Argument number two, the seventh day, the Sabbath, is an everlasting day. Meaning the text doesn't include the phrase evening and morning as it does in the other days in Genesis chapter 1. In fact, Hebrews chapter 4 says that God's rest has continued until this day. So again, the point seems to be that the author in describing real historical events is once again doing more than merely synthesizing hour by hour, day by day kind of camera footage. Argument number three. God's days aren't like our days. In the classic text, Psalm 90 verse 4, it reads, For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past. Argument number four, the word day in Genesis chapter 2 verse 4 refers to all six days in the creation account in Genesis chapter 1. So if the author is using the word day here in a way other than a 24-hour period of time, then we shouldn't demand that the other days of Genesis 1 be interpreted as 24-hour solar days as well. If you understand the basics of the day-age interpretation and you got what you came for in this video, please like it below because the YouTube algorithm likes that and that'll serve me as I try to help other people understand these big questions. And if you want to hear me break down more of some of the biggest questions from Genesis 1, 2, and 3, check out this playlist and we'll see you guys in a future video.